Welcome everyone to another fascinating live stream here with our low level graphic series. Also give you that view probably. In the previous videos, of course, if you're new to this channel, we did Verge Voodoo, number nine revolution 3D and uh, other Matrox and whatnot, and SG Octane and all the other fun stuff, and certainly P3 RSX, so quite some stuff. And our latest victim, <coughs> also to say, Matrox Paelia here, previous video. And I'm somewhat surprised that um, so many people voted here for community. Um, I had a question actually, I saw it. I asked, hey, could do a driver, but probably rather want to see me reverse power VR or microkernel stuff. And I'm really surprised that so many people voted Matrox Paelia MTX driver. Uh, 51 votes uh, till now and 40 so up. 25 or so people voted there for that. I'm really surprised, not really sure. Totally didn't expect that. And so I, the problem is of course very few people have this card. So not really sure if it's actually that much worse. Um, I basically, so what you see here is uh, this running. Let me quickly kill away the X server. So I spent a couple of more hours on this stuff and I fully basically understand all the uh, bits and pieces by now and I wanted to give you an in-depth update because again we don't have a specification in this uh, previous video we actually did here the re register dump um, reverse engineering here MM Valgrind MR um, MMT memory mapped IO tracing and basically got here this kind of register dump what you would get if you usually reverse engineer stuff and I so how do you continue with this so I said in the initial video um, for those who want to get into reverse engineering drivers and for fun and not for profit I said already so what you normally would do you would take a look at this stuff I said already what whatever that is maybe display data channel um, and then I basically in the very first video already outlined that you would make one reference dump and then run some set of fine-grained tests like uh, 2D blitting, 2D line, mode setting and then see what registers changed and how this stuff works and as I said with all the other 50 or more videos, Verge Voodoo, PS3, SG Octane, the stuff is usually quite similar of course, all this register stuff. Unfortunately there's not a standard, all this register layout and bits and pieces are always different. But yeah, this is how you usually would do it and I already started a little bit and of course some of the stuff was obvious um, what kind of register pattern would be used for um, drawing and stuff. And uh, that is also what I've done and then we get another fine surprise. So um, for now I use the X Xox server, so I only start the Xox server for um, putting it in graphic mode and basically not doing anything else. And uh, let's run your own program, so this is our own program that maps the PCI space. Usually we have in the other videos usually done it on DOS, um, but probably many people didn't find DOS too pleasing. I only used it as a bare metal payload loader. So running our own program here. And um, so yeah, so this is mode setting. So we have everything that is switched mode as you hopefully um, actually did not see because I'm an idiot. So yeah, this was mode setting. Maybe we need to kill this away again to show you that. Kill X. So it's not like not using render or whatever this is, right? Using the registers. Mode setting actually, um, unsurprisingly, one of the more difficult things. So let's run this again. So this is um, mode setting again from the nine, 920 um, to uh, 600, uh, 1600 to by 1200. Um, this is all the parameters that our common mode video timing generator stuff generates. Let's, because right now I've uh, if deft this because NERS so is our own code and in a minute I show you the code. Re Recompile it again and now it's doing, so this is our own code. Um, as you see, if solid fill, previous videos, similar stuff, virtual voodoo, you name it. Um, solid fill and the 2D line. And um, we also have bit BLT, so we bit BLT that to there, but that was right now empty. So let's run it again. This will bit BLT that from there to there, as you can see. So this is basically all the building blocks um, that you would need 
for your own driver. And we actually had one nice surprise. And I can also show you actually how this looks here in terms of registers. Um, let's, it should probably be what was the... Oh, let's scroll to register 1900. So um, one thing between... So what, what is the thing between um, when you look in some reverse engineered driver and they are full with magic constants like those. And that is usually just need to check what I'm actually showing here because today we are running only with one um, display, but probably should be all right. So one difference is when you um, reverse engineer that and so what you would normally do for bit BLT, you would capture this, um, not bit, bit, yeah, bit BLT or mode setting, um, you would capture those snippets and um, replay them and preferably uh, mode set. So I, what I've done here, mode settings is already quite some um, well, other stuff. So this are the trace and this comment lines you could actually delete away. So um, fun fact, my mode settings, by the way, like 20 times faster than the Matrox original because it somehow does all kinds of other stuff. And one difference is, so uh, of course you should um, reduce this to the most minimal code needed. And also, for example, there were a lot of like waiting or setting, right now I'm not setting the gamma, of course. For example, here it's the original code was setting this gamma curves for the nonlinear output using these registers. And I have not yet open coded this. And of course you should not replace this with 10,000 register writes. You should um, actually do this in a loop. Um, so that you're not open coded this, but for and i equals zero to whatever this was, so I'm not really sure, 10, 24 or 260, whatever the, um, whatever the uh, gamma table size would have been. But the other thing between um, when you eventually figure out what this stuff is, like this 1900 might be, or actually the cursor, we also have here cursor, actually I'm already showing quite some secrets. Um, okay, let's go to the cursor position. So cursor position was, um, I, by the way, was right. This was somehow 18, actually we have this documented here, MTXCC. Um, cursor position, as I speculated, um, here's something of A. I, I think A, is, actually I, I got this wrong cursor XYs, by the way, after further investigation is, oops, um, is 18C4 and A1A C4. And um, and this is cursor, whatever that was, doesn't really matter, cursor, control, whatever. Um, but this is also the thing about reverse engineering. First, you might guess, hey, this looks like the cursor position on a second uh, in depth investigation. You realize, oh, wait a second, no, this is cursor XY. But of course, the difference, um, and I document this, documented this here already, so in the previous video, I documented here some best guesses, like here, um, apertures and like cursors and stuff. And of course, the next thing is as many as registers as you figure out that are drawing control and surfaces and line X, Y, Z, C, whatever, you make nice symbolic constants out of them. I usually prefer enums for that, but uh, many other people also sometimes use defines. And then came a really nice surprise. One of the XORG developers saw um, this video. Not really sure if I men should mention him by name. But so one of the XORG developers told me, uh, by the way, regarding your video, um, maybe you want to download the old um, Matrox driver um, 0 0.2 and take a look there in the header files. And it's like, yeah, okay, because I obviously looked into the header files of the latest versions of the Matrox binary only Matrox MTX driver with just a little bit open uh, source shim for wrapping their Windows style driver to the Linux kernel. And to um, my surprise, Matrox of all companies with all the obfuscation and stuff in the old driver, they leaked most of the registers. <laughs> yes, seriously. And thanks for this tip, highly appreciated. So, um, I uh, honestly didn't see this before my reverse engineering and um, as you see my, my one of this guess was slightly wrong. So this is all the stuff that Matrox calls this internally and there's yeah, so much to um, not giving us a specification and open source driver but leaking all the registers. At least also a late thank you to Carl Lazard here 
Um, spelling out this, um, uh, the ironies, I think this header might not even be used in, uh, I need to check, but I think it might not even have been used. Anyway, so of course this header doesn't tell us all, for example, all the mode setting is not in here. Here is some DVI stuff, DVI control, but not what the bits do. So this is of course some parts of a header leak, um, do not give you the whole picture. Although some other stuff here is documented out, for, for example, the surfaces here, host surface stuff. And I was also right regarding this um, apertures, do they call it apertures? I might call it, what was it? Um, actually it was somewhere in the beginning. Um, or maybe they call it here surface control, maybe, and surface address offset. Maybe it was this one that I previously called the aperture, whatever. But so yeah, this certainly is a great help and certainly accelerated um, my work here enormously. So thanks for that, hard rocks of all companies. And yes, this also means for 20 years we could have, or nearly um, 18 or so at least, we could have had a full open source driver if we would have um, had any need and motivation. Um, again, this doesn't spell out all the stuff, even with this, with here some of this drawing control pattern stuff um, bits spelled out here, like um, drawing control, uh, raster uh, operands here. And um, this means, yeah, shifted by four bits, so, and masks, so this is yeah, nicely shifted and stuff. And so you still have need to do some guesswork because, of course, they do not precisely tell like a documentation, like a specification, how this fits together. And for example, here's this drawing and drawing go, you only understand like they have here drawing registers like all the other video cards previously. As, and they also see why I document this here on YouTube. All the cards are pretty similar. The concepts are quite the same. And of course, from my other work, I already knew the concept. Here are registers like X, Y, end and start. And again, we already figured this with reverse engineering. So this is X, Y, start. So this would be 1304, for example. And then we look in our reverse engineering um, register trace. We, of course, have here writes like this, 1304, 1308, 13AC. And here this is leaked header that Martrox leaked themselves. So yeah, thank you very much for that sort. Um, even with this was quite some guesswork and of course the mode setting, so all the mode setting bits are completely not um, specified. You see here like primary, um, primary, oh, come on, maybe it was primary, that, yeah. So whatever, so um, whatever, so pr like raster and I don't know, whatever that stand for, stands for. Um, so it's not like direct, it's not like fully um, spelling out here what all the individual bits mean. So this took quite some guesswork and certainly using our memory map I.O. trace. And again, you could, um, with watching those, like fig figuring out that these are some masks and um, so on mode setting. And I still had to do excessive use of this for actually writing this. So yeah, so basically everything is there. Um, I'm not really sure though. Um, probably I will like not do a full uh, driver, although I asked, but the driver is there. If, so if you wanted to, um, this is like also left for you playing along at home. Um, if you wanted to, um, if I do a driver, because for me the value in Xorg driver, I'm certainly Xorg developer, tell us um, it's um, end of life and Wayland and whatnot. And um, I'm I have uh, visions of much more modern uh, microkernel systems. So when I do a driver, I'm thankfully didn't ask what a driver when I asked here. But yeah, if I do a driver, then it's probably my own style of more modern something that can be reused with our microkernel with a more modern compo setting or windowing system. But yeah, let's go over it and see how all these bits uh, work. So mode setting is here. Um, and this works exactly like Virtual Voodoo and stuff. Of course, well, exactly. And it's, the concept is the same, the registers and bit patterns are obviously different. So I've not yet changed here all of this. Um, so this are primary and graphic engine. So this is basically like disabling, like certainly, uh, yes, you see, I changed already the reverse engineered bit pattern. So how this worked is I took this um, bit pattern of diffing this here of mode setting stuff. I'm not sure if they probably should maybe. Um, yeah, so I took this traces and copy and pasted this traces here and 
partially symbolized them already and commented. So you see, I commented stuff out. So the original driver set it, set the stuff multiple times for I don't know what reason. It works without this. This is also the danger and time wasting part of reverse engineering. If you want to distill and reduce this reverse engineered trace, often it works like re rewriting values again and again for no good reason. Often it works without whatever um, bizarre and less than ideal codes the original vendor did in its binary only code. So yeah, I've commented this out because yeah, superflues. The only basic so mode, mode setting I fully grokked and understood here. Um, fully accept um, the PLL, the face lock loop stuff. This is right now the only thing. So these are values I even did the efforts. I'm not yet fully understood those values. I think uh, probably um, also I compared this that I maybe not, um, maybe I have it here in some other, um, like here, let's better copy this here. Um, so comparing this with a uh, G400, they had their five bits M and P and S parameters for the face looked loop here for divider. So this was like the primary divider for the dividing the frequency. And so yes, it's probably similar because usually the companies do not rewrite it completely. They at least reuse some bits and pieces. So this PLL not yet figured out. This is the only magic number. This is somehow the frequency divider here. But yeah, whatever. So most likely it's like five bits primary divider and then seven bits or something. Again, this from judging from G400, but whatever. So um, somewhere there, um, like um, primary and other dividers. Um, so this is major, made the only obstacle of yeah, whatever you, um, how you re achieve that. And yes, you could certainly memory trace many, many resolutions and frequencies in between and make a an, an spreadsheet with all the bits and pieces. Or you use reverse engineering, um, disassembling their binary only stuff and checking that. But yes, this is the only annoying part. All the others, so this is a complete mode setting and that works as you have seen. Uh, what this is doing, yeah, I've not yet fully symbolized this. Um, 1C100, so symbolizing meaning um, opening this here. What was it? 1C, uh, hopefully, let's. 1C, oh, this is this. Um, if it was 1C, so yeah, it probably should be that one. So this is some um, um, drawing engine master clock or something, so like one. Um, and that is like um, disabling this, I get. I guess, so maybe this bit, this bit here uh, might be disabled, this drawing engine master clock, so like one or something. And then here is some mix uh, control, um, again this uh, symbols from their leaked header, because why not. Um, and of course the only issue is this is why there will right now be some magic values, whatever these bits do exactly, but doesn't really matter too much. Um, primary, uh, what, no, this is not primary, I always call it primary, what, whatever they call this like rendering or whatever, pixel raster, or who, who knows what. Um, so that is a problem with reverse engineering, whatever these numbers do most, most likely this are like stop the clock and reset stuff. Here is the mode setting. So we, I compute the mode already from our voodoo. So this is our own um, common video timing stuff of video mode here, 600 by 1600 by 1260 Hertz. Um, and so on, so, so again, the only thing is um, the PLL there, but otherwise, so this is only, this, this is fully reduced here from this traces, um, symbolized um, because, oh, as I said, the spec does not spell out. So this would be this one. And as you see, you have no clue what all the bits are in this register. So this is what I um, trace. So this is the mode, as this are the horizontal real pixels. And somehow it is like two pixels off and one pixels off for whatever counting reason. I have no idea. This is why from this mode. Um, yeah, I also modify this mode here slightly right now because due to the PLL timing. So without the modifications, um, the clock frequency is not precise enough and the display would sometimes not show it. But anyway, so this is the total mode. If you, um, if you figure out the, well, if you or we eventually figure out the full PLL dividers, then you don't need this. Um, 
anyway, so this is what you need to trace for. Um, this is tracing and then converting the six numbers to decimal. You will then figure that is 1920 with looking at the modes, which of those are the um, video timing parameters for uh, blank and sync. Um, here sync end and sync start. Here are 16-bit values. This were the values. This are if you convert this to from hex to decimal. This are 640 by 480 and 16 or 19. 20 by uh, whatever, 1200 also. And yes, this is, this is already nicely readable. This bits here fully understand, fully exposing all of Martrock's precious secrets. Um, then the mode setting continues here. Again, this uh, all this, okay, here are some reads in between. Um, I've not, so this is basically reading and then writing. I've not yet not, not copied his reading. Um, I tried without, and as you see, the, the mode setting works without all the reading stuff in between. Um, and like here, like setting it again and again, for what, whatever the original code is doing, they have no idea, uh, works without. So yeah, nicely distilled, so all the reading can be deleted, and then actually it's not that much left. And um, actually I have here still, yeah, I have still quite some recurring writes here that probably could potentially be like here eliminated. Um, we could actually check, oops, check live on YouTube if it works. See, as you see, this is, this is as probably disabling and re-enabling the clock. Not really sure if it needs that. So this is all the same register. So, this is, so as you see, this is most this eight bit here is most likely um, clock disable and here clock re-enable. I think at least, and we could actually check live here on this channel. Uh, let me just check, I probably need a third display. Also, um, let's save this and try if we broke something. And uh, pro tip, you want usually, um, ah, we didn't have this coded in if zero, oh, so this is the wrong file. F zero, let's Comment in the mode setting again. Yeah, still works with also a double set of whatever. So yeah, amazing stuff. The drawing is certainly more interesting. Uh, let me just check with uh, probably that. And as you see, certainly much more amazing with one display, uh, with, a, with an extra display. So the real drawing happens here. And so this is already fully symbolized as far as I remember. So what this is doing, so this the nice thing is the Matrox Pahelia hardware has four surfaces um, that is different from Virtual Voodoo and other cards. That means um, you can address four separate surfaces as far as I've seen. Um, um, probably for highest performance of blitting, um, like blitting here uh, one kind of texture and, and window stuff and still doing another in parallel or something. Um, Anyway, so we use surface one, which is what, again, there are four. Um, we use one. Um, this is address. This is basically the texture here in um, memory somewhere. And then drawing control with the source, the, um, the source index. Um, this would be, as far as I've seen, the, sur the surface. So this would be surface zero, one, two, three. Then what kind of raster operation, source copy. Um, destination, invert and whatnot, and blit, like line or blit, source, destination, and then this go triggers this, a similar concept. So there is this, um, just as with the virtual voodoo, there are some go or length, silicon motion length 3D. And um, yeah, just of what we have seen, so why do companies make such a secret of this? I have no idea. Then. Um, we have here, uh, wait a second, what did I even say? So this was, all oh right, so one is fill. Um, so this is blit, oh, this is, so two days, so this was bit BLT, this was, this is a solid rectangle. Um, here's a, and again, all these parameters fully determined here by locks and replaying this, but certainly nicely symbolized from the leaked Matrox header. Certainly very nice. So foreground color, um, white orbit set, line source, line destination works beautifully. Line destination go to trigger this engine to start working. 
just as we've seen in other hardware. And then last but not least, uh, also a line. So drawing control pattern solid, raster operation source copy. Uh, we're guessing there's some random bits. And by the way, all this stuff didn't work on the first try. All of this stuff is trial and error for 10, 15 minutes for each. Um, if you are a um, experienced um, master guru meditator, and if you start new for the first time, you might need an hour or day or week, depending on your skills and level of education. So foreground color. So this this was filled here in this uh, whatever shades of um, something. Um, so this foreground color works, um, line source, X, Y destination stuff. And uh, yeah, so this is all, all the basic, all basic um, building blocks. Um, one thing uh, what makes this more difficult than it uh, looks like is that this is already using a kind of a ring buffer, which makes um, tracing this rather difficult, uh, much more difficult, because initially I was looking at this and wondering where the heck... Oh, we have 6,000 drop frames, thank you very much. Garbage internet access shit. <coughs> um, oops. So when you when we look at this... Um, ah, come on. The second zero, is it zero, white? What was the log format? Let's see, uh, right. Two, um, and as we've seen here in the previous log, also can we have this here somewhere? Um, yeah, so this was, as per the previous video, you probably want to watch that for details. So the file descriptor one here, or the, tr the traced region one, was the 8K register, memory mapped registers. This memory mapped region two here is a frame buffer. And you might be wondering, initially I actually thought it's the driver is writing a cursor in there. It turns out no, it isn't. So it turns out this is this are commands, and the way this works, you have also already seen in all the P3 um, RSX reverse engineering and code videos. So um, turns out the driver is actually writing here commands in the uh, VRAM, um, just exactly the VIA, NVIDIA RSX and the P3. And uh, let me check my shorts as well. Okay. So um, you see that a little bit documented, but again, this took a little, or this took quite some guesswork to figure out. Um, this is header, we see a creating a command header, um, and this doesn't tell us too much, except this Steam A tag, um, because to compress this register, you see all those registers here are um, word aligned anyway here for eight, and most of them, most of the uh, important ones, the drawing engine ones, they start at 1000 here. So this is why for the DMA, actually this is not, this is slightly misleading. It's more like general, yeah, command buffer um, tech. But anyway, um, so the way this works is exactly like the 3D Labs uh, previous video, um, maybe um, 3D Labs and others. So they subtract 1000 hex because that is all the memory mapped IO register space that is not used for drawing engine anyway and divided by four shift it down to bits because um, to compress this to have 256 registers to address otherwise you could only with eight bits here this 132 bit vert or double vert you couldn't fit as many registers in this this is why this is compressed to the like logically register number. Again, something that you've seen also in the 3D labs, um, per media and glint and stuff. Um, so much to all the secrets, like, yeah, it's, it's always the same anyway. So this is what this is here. And what took me a while to figure out is um, how this works. So because here are some zeros and um, so this, this pattern didn't make the most sense because some of those need to be command header, um, like here, yeah, this is the naming, yeah, DMA command. Yeah. So some of them, some of them are command header and some of them are parameters. And this pattern didn't look regular enough for my taste. And um, it took a while of um, guru meditating on this. For example, here, um, here, this uh, 
apparently four arguments and this is the next command header and then we uh, might have I'm not even entirely sure how many this are here it's a little bit nah to be honest anyway so the way this works um, after a lot of Google meditation which really was um, quite a lot is that um, so first of all this this is written in in the VRAM or however you set up your DMA buffer um, it, it could be somewhere else like PCI bus master system memory but um, that is a story for another day and then they write here 408 you, you see here they write here the command until 1ac and then um, they write here the command and so 408 is also documented as DMA um, DMA drawing engine whatever end and so this is apparently like one, one of those is the currently active by the hardware DMA ring buffer pointer and this is the end so this is the one after not yet to be processed end of this command buffer so everything until 194 not really sure why 194 should this not be one let me see I thought I would think this should be 190 here so but whatever so the way this works is that um, for example here um, this is only one parameter and this are the next four parameters and the way I figured that out is that 21 is DMA stop and so this works the following way that some of these arguments are not valid so this is a variable length um, buffer where not each of those like you would expect um, this always be for like one command header and then for arguments but it isn't which made this decoding this a little bit um, annoying so when we take a look so this this is a header which we could also go to the beginning let's see it's the very first one so this is register 4 register 4 oh, it's not a good example so let's go here for example this is this should be only um, one header so the, the way this works is this is 21 hex so this is um, 21 um, multiplied by 4 plus 1000 hex so this is 4228 is the actual register as per the formula here by plus 1000 hex multiplied by 4 so 4228 and 4228 uh, 4228 four, no 422 ah, what have we here even all oh, right this is not hex um, also converts this to hex 4228 so this is 1084 1084 and that is DMA stop um, I'm a little bit surprised I would have expected them to use like DMA pad so although yeah this, this is a little strange um, so the naming of this leaked headers is a little bit strange I would not named it stop I would have named it pad so whatever the difference is between pad and stop I have no idea but this is although it's called um, pad it's uh, stop it's more like padding so what this means is this register is only valid this is this so DD we could calculate what register that is writing um, but it is this argument and all of those are not present here so this similar here this should be only this also the only confusing thing um, I had here examples where this mode made more sense right now this doesn't make the most sense um, let's call it another example because there are more than that um, right one but this is also the problem of reverse engineering you think you have fully grokked it and then there's an example where it doesn't make the most sense so here's a new command buffer so this is the next so here we continue writing you see here it makes more sense so here this matches precisely this R register C0 DDAF you see a nice parameters and then here's the next command header you see this because it's a repeating pattern of 2 1 of DMA stop so this fits perfectly of um, this two registers 8A 
8B2121, so this DMA stops, so this is not present in this, so um, 8A is this value, 8B is this value, and because this is DMA stop stop, this is nothing, and again, command header, two arguments, command header with stops one argument, so whatever is up there with the very first example where it doesn't match. So just deciphering this DMA buffer took me actually an, an hour of head scratching, and this is the kind of thing you need a little bit of experience, but this will come with time. And um, yeah, so this makes decoding this a little bit more error prone because initially I was only looking at this writes to the memory mapped I.O. region. And the reason I figured that this were um, DMA command buffers here is I was triggering here commands like um, drawing lines with TWM and X term and stuff. And there was, there were not enough commands in there. So then I only took a look and figured, wait a second, why are these frame buffer writes here going and why are they so few? And then I figured, wait a second, this somehow looks like um, parameters here. This doesn't make sense of writing frame buffer data. And so, yeah, that's, that's the command. So what does it mean for us? Um, let's see, long story short. Um, this basically means we have decoded like most of the secrets here. The only, so basically we, we could, if we wanted to, but probably I don't want unless, but share, like, and subscribe if this video gets uh, some thousand likes. For me, the value is not really, although I made this also, yeah, st um, um, thing, less, lesson learned. Um, I probably shouldn't do so many YouTube questionnaires because sometimes I might not like the outcome. I was sure people would be, yeah, power VR men and microkernel, but yeah, now they want an Matrox MTX driver also. Um, most of them probably, most of those who voted probably didn't have a Matrox uh, MTX to start with. So what does it mean? Uh, thanks to this leaked header, which certainly sheds quite some light on quite of some registers. The only question is what is, well, it's, the file doesn't have a copyright. So the question is now how, to, how do we deal with this? Um, how that, but well, the, yeah, theoretically this download has some mic Matrox binary only licensing. So yeah, this is a little bit near now. Um, I, by the way, some of them modified this. I, I modified this already a little bit. Some of this defines had some strange while loops. So this was like some while this uh, do or something or something, um, some, some nonsense uh, for, for whatever reason. So here's a question is now, what do we do with this header? Um, do we like, I, I don't know what. Um, all the secrets are out, uh, thanks to my reverse engineering here and um, filling some gaps with this nicely leaked header. Basically, you can, if you wanted to, um, playing along at home, write in whole X-Driver, all the, as you see, 2D filling, blitting lines um, are out there for 3D. Um, the concept is the same, so um, 3D bits are even a little bit documented of surface level. Also, yeah, 3D textures there you see. So you have here surfaces of cube texture and a normal of tiling and stuff. Um, you also have here 3D triangles. So the only question is, um, certainly for a high performance 3D driver, you would use this ring buffer to um, stream all the 3D data in there. And um, so this would mean tracing some more mm memory map I/O tracing because certainly as per the links 3D where the 3D bits were somewhat underdocumented and it took me quite some days of figuring that, those out. Um, 3D is here, but um, we don't have all the like texture control stuff. So all the texture, so we we know this registers are texture control for all the four quad parallel texture stuff texture filter, but again, as per previously, texture filter, so some of those bits, the problem with this is, this is also what our tracing would have revealed. Um, also, yeah, border colors is a totally normal stuff of Verge Voodoo, Link 3D, uh, number nine, ticket to write stuff, Revolution 3D. The only problem is, um, yeah, we know there's a texture filter stuff for bilinear, mipmap, and so on. 
just that we would need some memory map that would trace to figure out like writing a small program and then tracing what is a bit difference to figure out um, bilinear, tr trilinear map, map filtering are uh, bit one, two, three or whatever. Um, really a pity they didn't leak more here. Um, bump map surface address and mode and um, yeah this would be required to MMIO trace for a 3D driver but this is of course not what you need for a normal XORG driver and here also I saw some vertexes here um, yeah vertex 3D um, direct vertex programming and of course you would use some setup engine for that but yeah cooling engine um, vertex engine um, it is all here, including um, instruction of um, yeah, shader size, six, inst six instructions, twelve instruction stuff. The only and yeah, shader uh, pixel shader registers. Just that um, we would need to trace them to understand because right now we don't have the instructions in architecture for those. So that would be, as I said in the previous video, quite time consuming, but not my priority. Um, what we could do another day is reversing basic triangles, solid, shaded and textured. Um, that shouldn't be that difficult, but that is certainly something for another video. I hope you uh, learned a lot um, for that. Um, but yeah, basic stuff is working. Um, again, for me, this is basically everything you need for driver, but I don't have a week or month. So basically, probably you could get a quite well working XOG driver in a week, I guess. So if you have experienced um, like us here, you could probably with this, so basic stuff working, you could get a basic like mode, mode setting mostly. The only question is this PLL bits. Um, if you, by the way, if you continue this stuff and um, figure this PLL bits out, frequency divider stuff, let me know um, here of, of this, uh, 0A34. This by the way is also not documented here in this. So this is 03E0, uh, I think it was. It's not documented here um, for some reason. Um, whatever. And um, But it's doable. So for a beginning, you could hard code this PLL value for common modes here, like I've done here, and, and only support this modes uh, if you wanted to. But yeah, YOLO, whatever. Um, so yeah, everything is there. Um, you're invited to play along at home, get a card for six euro ninety um, off of eBay if you wanted to and have some fun reversing and finishing that. Maybe I will do another day um, and um, yeah, not yet sure. Um, my time probably better spent on not only Power VR and the micro kernel. I hope anyway that you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you have and could look over the 15% of 1200, um, 12,000, I mean 12,000, 15% drop frames, can't mix this stuff up. I hope it wasn't too choppy. Darn, stupid shit. Um, so yeah, what else do we have here? Welcome everyone in the audience uh, watching, how long? Um, then ask, what is the pro progress on the P3? Yeah, can't do here the same stuff, growing this channel can't do P3 every day, because as you see, this stuff is quite time consuming. And, um, but we will also continue on the P3 with this. Uh, even for me, I've not. I, I certainly knew all the basics, but I've not writ written whole uh, 3D drivers like this. this. Is why getting here the hang of it, like command buffer, similar to what we've seen on the P3 RSX, exactly similar, just like the bit pattern here, uh, registers and stuff. Of course, different on Nvidia, but step by step we are getting in the direction, understanding all the bits and pieces of vintage and more modern graphic hardware. The PS3 RSX, of course, only a little bit uh, newer, so um, just like four or five years or so. So this is um, uh, pretty similar actually to that, but um, this is also why I'm not only practicing my own skill, but also trying to create entertaining videos. Um, what else do we have there? Wondering about Good course or something similar to GPU direct using Vulkan. Uh, you got the Discord server. Can I have the invite link? Sure, you can. Uh, Discord. 
let's uh, invite that again can okay, never have too many discord invite people of um, permanent link that and there you go oops this is also not copying the full url because no but anyway, it is as usual a fun to understand, to unlock all the company secrets, to understand all the bits and pieces, um, and why I find it so laughable that companies treat this as if this is uh, the topmost top secret. Um, the graver said maybe they tend to open source driver but run out of legal issue, maybe IP was there. Um, I think all, all the IP probably was there. They had uh, they re released some of the specification to some developers with a G200, G400. Um, and the, the funny thing is they, so this header here, I mean, at, I mentioned this before already, there was um, the P690 at one, like uh, 12 years ago, they requested XORG repository where they never committed something. So they were like, hey, can we have this, like this, Yannick, can we have this repository? And yeah, they got it and then yeah, text, Test, thank you very much. And they had this header only in the old 0 0.2 driver, not in the later 0 0.4 or something of that sort. So yeah, whatever the deal is with that. But um, yeah, really interesting nonetheless. Um, I learned as usual a lot. Um, maybe I MMIO trace uh, some triangles for the fun of it. Another. Weekend, but as usual, leave in the comments below. The problem is, uh, you see here, um, not not only a decade ago, I said this before, made, I made videos before how to not make money with open source. The problem is, I never could really make significant amount of money like that you could live off of this with writing drivers of whatever sort. So this is a huge problem, right? If you like other Novo, and um, other developers, um, yeah, where's the incentive, right? You write the driver next to nobody ever wants to pay you. Maybe you're lucky you have a project at a stock exchange where they want to use Smart Rocks drivers or the Weather Channel, but non, um, b beside from this, most normal companies next to nobody, like Suze Red Hat. Um, yeah, and nowadays, of course, the, the irony is I had this card here, um, I brought it a decade ago, knowing that, yeah, it. Actually, I hoped it is similar to um, the G200, G400, and um, the driver would be somewhat easy to uh, cr to ride. Um, so yeah, the irony is I had this card um, for a decade for six euro ninety, and um, could have actually written the driver for a decade already. I, I didn't actually. I. Um, after figuring it's not as similar to the G400, actually I thought they just took a G400 and, and modified a little bit. Um, I looked quickly and said, yeah, it's quite different, so you look whatever. Um, had I known that it is as simple as uh, as it is here now, I could have done it a decade ago. And a decade ago, it was actually still quite usable. So yeah, anyway, as it is, it's a nice learning experience. Um, also hopefully for you playing along at home, but we certainly have more P3 um, SGI and other fun stuff uh, coming. Probably don't want, don't want to forget to share, like, and subscribe. Tell your uh, friends and family. And uh, we also certainly, or even for me, so I don't need this card on a daily basis. So for me, uh, what's coming up next is reverse engineering. Here's this binary only EpiFun Captcha dongle versus videos right now coming over because it's also has a binary only shit driver. So yeah, that's coming up next and that is also more usable. But even there the problem is, um, even there I'm not the most motivated. So what is my motivation to, well, I could for my own microkernel, we could do an amazing driver now. Um, what should be my motivation to write an XORG driver? Um, similar to that, the problem is um, I want something more secure, something more portable, more scalable, like our own microkernel. Um, even for that, if we reverse engineer this, um, someone else has done this for the USB 2 version, um, for the older version, and he wrote some Go user space. Of course, the problem um, with that is uh, how to reuse it, right? This is a problem of modern modern stuff. CP uh, fun reverse 
Um, you know, I made a video about it already about someone. Um, um, it's probably this is our video maybe here, yeah. and so that is here GitHub. And the problem is with yeah, this is Go call, Go code. Um, you can't like reuse it in a in the, in the Linux kernel. And even for me, um, the, the difference between having a proof of concept working and writing a monolithic Linux kernel driver, which constantly can crash, um, is not the easiest. So maybe even for us, the easier thing is then to write a user space daemon or something with libusb. But yeah, that's for the next video sometime soon, because that is the difference. This I need nearly kind of daily or weekly here for this YouTube channel and this Matrix Paleo is like, yeah, was a fun exercise. We have it mostly working if you, um, yeah, leave in the comments below if we should write an XOR driver, but yeah, um, somehow it's not so, as I mentioned, not the most pressing task. There are certainly more important things, but it's spreading knowledge for reverse engineering how video cards work. That is also my grief with companies like NVIDIA and Matrox and stuff selling uh, our top secret. And then the problem is students and developers can't understand and learn how cards work anymore. This is also why I do this educational YouTube series um, and um, shed some light here on this dark corners of um, graphic programming. That's it for today as usual. I hope you learned something. Leave in the comments below what you think. Um, do you really want to see an extra driver or just our microkernel stuff? Should I finish more of this stuff, um, texture, blending and similar stuff? Um, and I hope to see you soon for all the next videos and live streams to come.